All right, so now that we have everything lined up, and I'm sure that there's going to be minor adjustments along the way, uh, take in consideration that the front isn't very useful. Uh, it's okay useful, but it's not perfectly useful. So here, I'm just going to start roughing in this form. Do that by engaging all the points, vertices, to a certain locale. In this case, I'm going to concentrate on the body. Just like that. And 7 on the keyboard gives me the general overall shape. In the top view, I just kind of generally average things. So I'm going to start with this point right here. So as long as they're touching those two points. A on the keyboard to kind of center this. Perfect. Now you can see that after I did all those minor or adjustments right there, look how off my front view is. Okay. Well, I can make it just a little bit better in the fact that, you know, my front, I can take and scale it down just a little bit and it helps. Again, it's not very useful, but it works. Uh, first thing I want to do is take and center this here. So I right click and then I go object transform origin to 3D cursor. This will place the origin right in the middle of the picture based upon the X-wing. I'm just going to scale this down just a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit, but it's going to be schizophrenic. So It's also going to pop it up front, which is highly annoying. I did that because my uh, origin was way out there. So let me center up that origin just a little bit more. Again, I can put it here. and then put it here. Okay, object, transform, origin 3D cursor. So now my origin is perfectly on that plane based upon its world ordinance. All right, now let's try scaling that again. Again, I know that it's roughly the size of my body. And if I take this, scale it up, or scale it sideways, I can get the overall average of it. I trust my top view and my side view more than my front. I'd rather tweak the front. Okay, there we go. So there's some minor adjustments along the way, no doubt about it. Good. Okay, let's go back to the cube. Let's go in edit mode. What I like to do here is get rid of these edge loops. I want the bare minimum required. Okay, shift and alt, X, edge loop. Again, shift and alt, X, edge loop. That gets it just to be a cube. Now that I have everything lined up also, I like to do this. 
in object mode, I'm going to apply the scale. That way, if I ever need to go back to the scale of this, I can. I can go to 1. Good, good. So it's a little bit different in orthographic uh, modeling in the fact that, you know, sometimes you just want to cut loose and make some cool things. In orthographic, it's somewhat exact and a little bit too exact, in my opinion. The one thing I always tell students is the fact that if you if you want to be creative this way, you can add lib, but don't get used to orthographic modeling. In my opinion, it, it's a it's a nice cushion for students to get kind of comfy into because you don't have to draw or be creative or anything like that because you're using somebody else's drawing. Sometimes you can draw these yourself, but uh, again, you know, I like to make sure students are getting the whole package as far as creativity goes. Be creative, start making forms, putting them together like I have been in the past videos, but this is just an alternative and I just want to show it to you that way you have it underneath your arsenal. Just don't get comfy at it. It's a sad thing. Like a student will say, well I don't have an orthographic view for that. Oh, well, come on. You can't you can't think of it or draw it up yourself. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing now. Uh, we're going to be starting to cut this up and look at that workflow. Okay, I'm going to insert an edge loop here. Again, that's Control R. Slide one here. And I'm going to put one here. I'm also going to put one here. And I'm showing you, I'll show you why I'm placing these edge loops where I am. These are going to represent the form change. So here's a form change, here's a form change, and here's a form change. To illustrate this better, let's go into vertices and move those up, down just a little bit this up. Okay, so you can see those form changes right there. Okay, it's going to be a form change. I'm just going to squish that up. Form change here. Now there's another form change right here. I'm just going to rough this in for right now. I'm going to keep it right there. Notice I'm selecting things by going like this. Marquee select move. Marquee select move. Okay, that's important. Marquee select move. If I'm in my top view, I don't move. I marquee select scale. So in this case, I'm going to scale in, marquee select scale. This way, it's uniformed both in the right and left. And as you can tell, the orthographics is a little off. Okay, I would concentrate on one side of the vehicle at this point and not get hung up on the technical details of why this is off, because it is off. Okay, it's gonna be a form change there. Kind of a form change there. I'm not going to move those just yet because I want to concentrate on other things here. At this point, if you hit one, you can see, wow, big, huge, hot mess, right? Yep. Okay. And that's why I'm saying that the, the front view isn't very uh, easy to use half the time.
All right, I'm going to divide this model or this cube up. So insert an edge loop there now. Insert an edge loop there. Notice I put the edge loops in now because everything's kind of a, a general shape, and now I can do that. If you do it ahead of time, it will hurt you. It'll make it so it's a little bit harder to get the overall form of things. All right, well, in the front view, I can get a couple things out of the way. Maybe I can go like this. Let's scale these in. And maybe I can take and scale these in. So I can get the general overall shape, but I'm not going to constant or use it too often. There we go. See, I got this tube. Here's what it looks like. Solid. Just like that. So the general overall shape. Minus the front, so the front's going to have to be adjusted just a little bit. Again, I'm only scaling in pairs, so I'm scaling in pairs just like that. Grab all these, scale in pairs. This will make it so symmetry is not broken. There we go. Now we got the general overall shape of things. Okay, right here, I'll show you how to get this form change. I'm going to move these here. And then I'm going to select faces. I'm going to select all faces in this area. Just like that. Control E to extrude. And then I'm going to use a thing called a long normal and just puff this out just a little bit. How much? Well, you could see it in the different views. So I puffed it out just so I can grab it. And now here I can make some adjustments. I can pull that back and I can scale it in. Go back to vertices. Move that up. Control R to insert an edge loop, and then I can now get that shape. So, in the overall shape of things, this is now what it looks like. Good. All right, now this video is getting kind of long, so let me move on to the next video.